Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Friday Bible study. Our elder Milton Andrews and Pastor Sister Lord of the Lord is going to bless us and give us new information on subjects that have been talked about before. So he always brings a new perspective, and we're happy about that. I just wanted to say we are entering into this special season. It's uh, 10 days out from Resurrection Sunday. Next week is Good Friday. And it just came to mind that we know the walk that Jesus took for us. We know that uh, the book of Luke will give us all the details about the resurrection. Well, for just a moment, I wanted you to look at this from another perspective. As we look at our family and the things that we've gone through this past year, many negative situations have come about, certainly the pandemic. But for some of us, it's been more than that. It's been catastrophic events that have come about. It could have been the hurricanes that came, the floods that came, the fires in some instances. And this last few months, there were ice storms and, and um, breakage of water pipes that created problems for our family in Texas, as well as yours and other places too. So we just wanted to take a moment to say, Stop for a minute and look at what Jesus has taught us to do in this time of, of uh, eventful things in our lives. It's not so much that we can avoid them or that we can even take the things that come about. But one thing we have learned that he's taught us is that we can decide how we're going to handle these things. We can take the situation, but we can make a choice and a conscious effort to walk through it in a way that will be helpful to not only us, but our families and those around us. Our families not only hear what we say, but they watch what we do. So we can give them a lesson in how to endure to the end. That we can be the light on the top of that mountain, on the top of that hill, that can be an inspiration to others around us. If we get bad news, you know, whatever it is, if we're losing uh, loved ones to terrible situations, we can't change that, but we can come out of it in a way. We can withstand it and endure so that our families will know that when trouble comes, there's a way to handle it and that we can turn to the Lord and he will walk us through. So in this Easter, in this resurrection season, let's remember that we can be an inspiration and help to our families and how we choose to live our lives. God bless you. Father Andrew is going to come and he's going to bring us a wonderful lesson about fasting and how it applies to what we need to do with the Lord. God bless you and enjoy this resurrection season. Thank you, sweetheart. My God, my God. I, I just love hearing my wife speak. Maybe a little prejudice. I don't know. I guess it is. And uh, we had some conversation even before we began the Facebook Live, and we talk about some things, and I'm just so honored to have someone that I can um, throw out, and she can tell me what she thinks. Don't have to worry about my feelings. She just deal with truth, and she know I respect that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Giving God uh, the honor and praise. We got a new format here. We're trying to get together. I'm trying to uh, pick up the Joe Hewitt type spirit because he's so excellent in all that he and Portia Hewitt does. We are coming to you live from the library of Elder Milton Andrew in St. Augustine, Florida. So we pray that you are getting this telecast and that it's coming out clear, loud, and whatever it needs to be. I just want to go into prayer and then we're going into a topic that God has impressed upon my spirit. I feel like the praiseologist, uh, as she speaks to us so often from Detroit, and uh, she says that, you know, these things start at home, in her bedroom, in her mind, in her kitchen. And now God has been impressed in us to share them to others. So when I talk to you today, I'm actually talking through myself to you. So we're going to pray that God has his way and that God fix us to be what we need to be in this last and evil day. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, we praise you, 
and we lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for those, Lord, who have locked in and tuned in because we know that they have been ordered by you to be here. For you have a word, Lord, that you would like to speak into their spirits on this day. We pray for those, Lord, that would replay, that we all, Lord, continue, Lord, to strive, Lord, to see your face and to do those things, Lord, that are pleasing unto you. Bless us, Lord, in our efforts today to be a blessing unto your people. And God, we shall remember and give your name the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Glory be to God. I, I, I bless God for you, Luann, uh, Kalisa, my big friend, call him my big brother. I'm older than him, but Joseph Hewitt, I, I bless you guys. Uh, uh, Monique, I bless you. Deborah Smith, I bless you all for coming. And I ask you to hold on for the next 25 minutes. I believe God is going to speak to us where we are and where we need to go. Turn with me to Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verse number six. And it reads as this, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke, it is not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover, cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thy health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go therefore, go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Praise God. I'd like to speak to you from the topic of chasing God through fasting. We understand that the word chase means to run after, to follow, to seek, to, to look and to search for. And I believe all of you can agree with me that this time has never been a time that we should be chasing God like we have never chased him before. I believe all of you can agree that we're living in perilous times, racial divide and racial hatred on a level that I've never seen it before. We're living in a pandemic that somebody, some people call it a pandemic from God. We live in an isolation from our families, from our friends, and from our churches. Death from the pandemic is at a high. Loss of jobs, sickness in our bodies, isolation. All of these things have come upon us in this last days. And you understand this, that Satan desires, his mission is to hinder us, to prevent us, to stop every prayer meeting. He must rather us pray, no, talk together about Jesus than to get on our knees to pray to Jesus. See, Satan realized this, that there's power in prayer and fasting. Even the Bible said, Jesus said, some of his demons don't move except by praying and fasting. Could it be that one of those demons that is not moving as we look in the rear view mirror of our lives was the sickness of our parents, that we prayed and nothing happened, our children still being out in the world, that we prayed and nothing happened? Jesus said, these come out except by nothing but prayer and fasting. My brothers and sisters, prayer and fasting are two of the most powerful weapons that God has given us to operate, to navigate through these perilous times. Yet we see these weapons are not used by the church. In fact, we have taken them and they are collecting dust 
on our bookshelves of life. We understand that God is depending on the church. He's depending on us to help him navigate, to help him to come against the powers of darkness, to be an instrument that God uses to cast down and to cast out and to uplift his people. God is depending on us. I remember the scriptures in Second Chronicle, I believe. He said that if I should shut up the heavens and there be no rain, if I shall send the locusts to devour the land, if I shall send pestilence among my people, he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness, he said, then I would hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. My brothers and sisters, this land need healing. My brothers and sisters, God is depending on us to be that catalyst that he uses to come against the forces that have come against us, the church, and this world. Look at me uh, for a moment in Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter, and verse number 29. Listen to what Jesus says. The people of the land has, have used oppression. You see this voter right oppressions happening now and exercising robbery. They want to give to the rich and let the poor just disappear and have vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought for a man among them. He's talking about us, y'all. He sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it but I found none. Therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed until their heads, said the Lord. God is trying not to bring destruction upon mankind. He needs us in the ministry of reconciliation. He needs us to be able to hear and see and understand his ways. When I look at this, I, I, I look at the fact that 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 3 and 4, it speaks to the fact that he says that we live in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. He says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, brothers and sisters, God is speaking to me. He showed me that the stronghold of Satan is that he has a fortress around the minds of the children of God. In other words, our paradigm, what we see, what we hear, and what we perceive of God is not really of God. He has changed things and made our imagination and the things that we go through as being truth and the word of God as being false. Remember in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, when he said that he was going to raise his throne to be above the, the stars of God, the throne of God. Now, we understand that God kicked him to the earth, but he didn't quit there. Pride is still his major characteristic. Now, he is raising his word. He has exalted his word that it would be higher than the word of God. My brothers and sisters, Satan says that you can't, and God's word says that you can do all things through him that strengthens us. He has moved his word 
higher than God's word, and many of us are living in the atmosphere and the and the and the living of I can't when God has equipped us to be able to do. He has said, boy, you are sick. He has elevated that word above God's word that says, I was wounded for your transgressions. I was bruised for your iniquity. And the chastisement of my peace was upon you. And with my stripes, brother, I said you healed. Satan said you're not healed. He has elevated and exalted his word and placed us in that stronghold where he's locked us in, and what we see, our paradigm, is we see what we see is not clear. What we see is darkly. What we see are the things that are coming against us and not what God says. He says to us that you ain't nothing. He elevated higher than what God says, that he says that you are more than a conqueror. There's nothing that you cannot do. Would God be for you, there's nothing that can come against you. So my brothers and sisters, if we are to live with the peace of God, then we got to change our paradigm of God. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know my thoughts towards you, thoughts of good and not evil, to bring you to an expected end. God loves us and God is pulling for us to be all that we can be because he's depending on us to tear down the kingdom of Satan. He's depending on us to lead people to this place called grace, this place called salvation. So God is depending on us. He wants us to win and not to lose. So we got to begin to change our paradigm that we will see clearly what God is saying to us, the church. My God, my God, my God. Prayer and fasting are two powerful weapons that God has given unto us, the church, to pull down the strongholds of lies, the strongholds that Satan has upon our thinking. We have stinking thinking. We think wrong. We don't see clearly because we're not looking through the eyes that we should be looking through. One of my prayers is, Lord, let my mind be like your mind. Lord, let my thoughts be like your thoughts. Because if they are like Milton, then I don't see clearly. Well, if they are like Milton, when I feel bad, I'm claiming sickness. But if I can see through the mind of God, I see in another level. I see in heavenly places, I see that what you see is not what you see. That what you feel is not what you feel. Only what God says is what we are laying on and standing on and commanding on. And my brothers and sisters, God has given us the weaponry of fasting and praying to take the blindness out of us, to show us things about himself, to reveal to us what is truth and what is false. What is fasting? Fasting is a voluntary abstaining from food and drink at a time for a time to give us an opportunity to give our full attention to a particular matter. It must be accompanied with sincere prayer to be effective in securing an answer from God. In other words, my brothers and sisters, if you fast and don't pray, you're just on a diet. You may lose weight, but there is no yoke power. There's no yoke uh, destroying power that's coming from a diet. You got to understand that you have to give yourself to fasting and look. Man, this is the hardest thing that I have to do in the world of God. I hate fasting. Glory be to God. But God has impressed in my spirit that I have to fast to last. I have to pray to stay because Satan is going to knock us off 
of our axis and have us way over in left field, way over in right field, and not in the field that you've called us to be in. The other thing that you got to understand that you are sustained by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You're not sustained by food. You are sustained by God. So when we go into the sense of fasting, it's not so much of an absence of food, but it is of a feasting on the word of God. So when we fast, we have to pray. And as we fast and pray, we have to feast on the word of God. It's a conditioning of our spirits that God is placing us in to prepare our hearts and our minds to hear what thus saith the Lord, to see the hands of God, to watch the move of God in our lives and on this earth. We need another set of eyes. Now, let me say this, my brothers and sisters, understand clearly that fasting ain't for God. Prayer ain't for God. Praise isn't for God. As much as you say, praise me, these things are for us. God is omnipresent. God is all powerful. He is everywhere. He knows everything. God don't need our prayers, but he's given us these weapons to open up our hearts and give us understanding of how to defeat the enemy, how to hear from him, how to see him in our situations. So he don't need us to praise him. He said, if you don't praise me, I get the rocks to praise me. These things are for us. And he's not mad at you when you don't pray. He tried to lead you into positions and situations to cause you to pray. But prayer is for us, you all. Prayer is us seeking from God. Prayer is us bringing God down to us. Because look, my brothers and sisters, these are weapons that God has given us. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty to the pulling down of the strongholds that have kept us from receiving what God has ordained for us to have. So we see that fasting and prayer and, and, and praise are things, that's, those are our weapons. God, God, love. God don't need those things. You need those things. So when we look at fasting, there are several kinds of fasts. And as I studied uh, through the Bible and on this topic, I found nine different kinds of fasting done in the Bible. And over the coming weeks, we're going to look at those nine different fasts. And we're going to begin to incorporate a mindset of how to, when to, and what to do as we fast, that we can become all that God has called us to. I'm asking you all to join me as we begin to move into this crushing subject called fasting. Nobody want to fast. We all want to this feel-good religion. And man, I want to feel good every day. I got enough problems than adding fasting to the equation. But God is saying those who come after me must deny themselves and pick up their cross and follow me. He that saved his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. My brothers and sisters, it sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds paradoxical, but it is all that God is requiring for us. And in these last days, the requirement has raised its stakes. God is looking for the church now to find him, that you can be the army that he's sending out to bring in this last remnant before he comes back for the church. And my brothers and sisters, we got to have a paradigm shift. When you're sick, you don't say you're sick. You say what God say you are. You say that I'm healed. I know I got symptoms, but God doesn't lie. I, if I got to go down, I'm going down on what God said. By his stripes, I am healed. Man, I don't understand everything. That's why God said you need to fast. Man, I don't see it. That's why God say you need to fast. 
Glory be to God. So there's a regular fast that you saw Jesus doing, and you see in Matthew 4 and 2 that when Jesus finished the 40-day fast, he was hungered. He didn't have food. He didn't have uh, bread, but it seemed like he had water. So regular fast is that you abstain from food, you abstain from uh, bread, but you drink water. Then you have the partial fast found in Daniel. That fast uh, Daniel used to omit certain meals each day. It's more like going on vegetables. Daniel did a 10-day fast when the king wanted him to eat all the meat off the king's table, and he showed them that his eating their diet was much better and their continence proved it after 10 days. Then he did the 21 day fast when he was looking for a spiritual breakthrough. When there's questions that you need, when there are forces that are blocking and holding back God's answer to things that you need, things that you have to have, things that are blocking you from being what God is calling you to be. And, and when the angel came, he came and said that, look, God had already sent it, the answer, when you begin to pray. He said, but he was stopped. He was fought by the prince of Persia. He was fought by the princes of the air. You see, most of our answers are coming from heaven. They're coming from a different dimension. And sometimes they are clouded up. Sometimes they are hindered by the powers of of spiritual darknesses in high places. So sometimes we have to wait, but he sent Michael, the archangel, who came and fought off the Prince of Persia and allowed the answer to come through. So God is answering our prayers. Sometimes we got to do our part. Sometimes we got to hang in there and, 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 and fast and pray that God can actually move in and break the forces and give us the spiritual breakthrough that we need. And, and, and we see that the benefits of fasting, it brings deliverance. As we read in Isaiah 58 and 6, it releases our faith for healing. As we read in Isaiah 58 and 8, and it disciplines our body. As we read in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, it gives force to our prayers as we read in Ezra 8 and 23, when we fast, our main objective should be to minister to the Lord through worship and by giving ourselves wholly to him. My brothers and sisters, I'm just about finished, but I need to, you to understand that it is a time of refreshing. Look at the other benefits of fasting. It expressed griefs. It brings your flesh under subjection. And my brothers and sisters, all of us, if we are honest, know that this flesh needs to be brought under subjection. For guidance and direction, some things we don't know. Some of us are marrying people that we shouldn't marry. Sometimes we got to fast and pray and get the answer from God of what we should do in terms of our lifelong mate. Some of us are made shipwrecked because we have deified ourselves and chosen our own wives and built a do it, use a do it yourself kit and made our own blessings. God is saying, you can't afford to be wrong in this end time. You got to fast and get the mind of me that I may lead and direct and guide you into all things that I've ordained to be for you. It's the signs of national repentance. You see that in when we study these fasts, you're going to find out that they even fast for the whole nation. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's necessary because our nation is in peril. And if we, the church, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, don't take a stand and be intercede for the earth, then this earth is in perils. I mean, people are going to suffer and die needlessly because we didn't find ourselves in the place that God has ordained us to be. It helps us to seek the heart of God. It helps us develop a closer relationship with God. Some of us are just shadow boxing. Some of us go into the prayer room and man, the prayers hit you back from the ceiling, back on your head. 
because we have not gotten closer to God. We are fleshing our way through this thing, and God is wanting us to kill this flesh and let the Spirit of God become partners with your spirit and move you into all that God has for us. To afflict one's soul, to discern the will of God, appointment of ministers, to seek the mind of God, divine intervention, spiritual strength and fortitude, and spiritual breakthrough. Chasing God through fasting, man, we got to keep on until we find God. We got to find him in the essence of his calling upon us and his purpose. Give us spiritual strength to help us in times such as these. My brothers and sisters, we're going to try to reintroduce you to the excitement of fasting and praying. We want you to understand that God, through fasting and praying, still answer prayers. That God, through fasting and praying, still break every yoke. We want you to understand that God is still doing great things. We just got to move our eyes from the natural and see in the spiritual. For God says that the just must walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We will never see unless we dismiss this flesh and fast and pray that God will give us eyes to see that they are more with us than against us, that we have more power in us than the forces that comes on the outside of us. So my brothers and my sisters, I want you all to stick with us down through the weeks as we deal with the disciples fast, as we deal with the Ezra fast, the Samuel fast, the Elijah fast, the widow fast, the St. Paul fast, the Daniels fast, and the Esther's fast. We want to cover these fasts that we may be in a perfect will of the God that have called us out of darkness into this marvelous light to show forth the praises of him and the mighty acts that he've done in and outside of us. My brothers and sisters, hang in there. Keep on keeping on. Keep trusting God to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. He still has a desire to bless you. He still has a desire to see you married. He still has the desire to save your children. He still has the desire to prosper you. Fast and pray and let him lead and guide you into all these blessed things that he desired to give unto us. God bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your visitation. Help us, God. Help me, God, to put into their hearts, their ears, what you've placed into mine, that this is a time, Lord, this is the season that we got to come back to you and come back to you in a mighty way. Bless us, Lord, that we may be a blessing. We give your name the glory and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Love you. Until the next time, God bless you.